Good evening, I'm Camelia and this is Kini News. Najib's 1MDB corruption trial will only resume in about two weeks. This is because he's still being treated in HKL. Najib Abdul Razak is on two-day medical leave and is still warded at Kuala Lumpur Hospital. As a result, his 1MDB corruption trial before the Kuala Lumpur High Court would only resume on September 26. Najib's lead defence counsel, Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, confirmed that the former finance minister was warded at HKL. Shafi said that he only managed to meet his client at HKL after three hours. Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib said that the prosecution has no objection against the defence's application to vacate the trial tomorrow. This is because the accused condition was attested by government officers at a public hospital. Yesterday, it was reported that Najib was warded at HKL due to fluctuation in his blood pressure. Two days ago, the prosecution informed the court that Najib's health was quite bad and he needed to see a doctor. Separately, Najib Special Officer Muhammad Muklis Maghribi revealed that doctors at HKL performed a scope on the Pekan MP and discovered multiple new ulcers, a recurring problem in the last 15 years. Najib is on trial on four counts of abuse of power and 21 counts of money laundering involving 2.28 billion ringgit from 1MDB. The Malaysian ringgit continues to fall compared to the US dollar. However, according to our finance minister, we have nothing to worry about. Finance Minister Tagus Zafrul Abdul Aziz assured Malaysians that the country is not experiencing an economic crisis. This is despite the ringgit slipping further to a fresh 24-year low against the US dollar at the opening on Wednesday. According to Bernama, at 9.05 a.m., the local currency slid to 4 ringgit and 52 cents against the greenback. Zafrul explained that the ringgit's performance should be viewed holistically, not just in comparison with the US dollar. He said this is because the local note has also strengthened against other currencies. Most currencies in the Southeast Asia region have been depreciating against the U.S. dollar after a series of aggressive interest rate hikes by the U.S. Central Bank this year. Bank Negara has been responding in tandem by raising interest rates, thus increasing the cost of borrowing. Zafrul added that economic fundamentals that have continued to strengthen are important in determining the robustness of the ringgit. Malaysia Kini is offering a very special subscription promotion in conjunction with Malaysia Day from September 12th to 19th. You can redeem the promotion by scanning the QR code and by using the code KINITV916. Now back to our program, Penang has been ruled by Pakatan Rakyat, now called Pakatan Harapan since 2008. However, BN appears confident that the state will return to BN's grasp. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob has expressed confidence that BN can retake Penang. This was after he attended a Penang BN meeting on Monday night. Writing on Facebook, Ismail Sabri said the sea of BN Blue was full of the Penang BN spirit. He added that this proves that BN is ready to win over the people of Penang. Ismail Sabri also said that young people who will become voters will always be prioritized by BN. Ismail Sabri attended a closed-door Penang BN meeting at Raya Inn Hotel. Ismail Sabri is also AMNO Vice President. Based on photographs shared by Penang MCA Chief Tan Teik Cheng, Ismail Sabri was the highest-ranking AMNO figure at the event. At the time, AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi was attending the party Makal Sakti Annual General Assembly in Kuala Lumpur. BN had lost Penang to Pakatan Rakyat in 2008 and failed to make any inroads in the next two subsequent elections. Politicians have begun using TikTok to appeal to a younger crowd. However, sometimes politicians can be rather tone-deaf, leading to social media disasters like we're about to see. Female politicians from across the political divide have slammed Women, Family and Community Development Minister Rina Harun over a video clip featuring actor Rosham Noor that was deemed disrespectful of women. 
The video shared on Rina's TikTok account showed Rosham speaking in a gangster-like manner, believed to be mimicking his Tai Long character in the famous local thug movie KL Gangster 2. In what seemed to be a promotional video for the ministry's entrepreneurship program for women. Bangun lambat, bangun lambat, semuanya lambat. Perempuan ni, wanita ni semua lambat. Eh, bangkitlah, bangkit. Bangun daripada tidur. Besok kat PWTC, uh, ataupun WTC KL, uh, program aku dengan ni, Datuk Seri Rina, dengan kementerian dekat belakang ni. Kau baca sendiri lah. Kan? Besok siapa-siapa nak masuk, kau datang je kat sana. Eh? Pukul 9 pagi. Kau jumpa aku, aku nak belasah kepala kau orang. Politicians criticized Rosham's choice of words where he appeared to be ridiculing women as Rina smiles watching the actor doing so. Segambut MP Hana Yoh in a statement regarded the video as a cheap publicity that brings shame to the minister's position. Her sentiment was echoed by Selangor State Assembly member for Bukit Lanjan Elizabeth Wong, who posted on her Instagram story criticizing Rosham and Rina. Pengerang MP Azalina Othman Said, who is from ruling party Barisan National, had also lambasted the video. She posted on Twitter this morning telling Rina that she would take out the word women from the ministry's name. Many netizens were also similarly disgruntled over the video on Twitter and Instagram. Floods devastated many parts of the Klang Valley in December last year. Now with the year end approaching, one lawmaker fears too little is being done. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob's efforts to prepare for floods later this year are commendable but insufficient. This is according to Klang MP Charles Santiago. The DAP lawmaker pointed out that there remain many glaring issues. This is following the Premier's recent meeting with the Federal Disaster Management Task Force to assess the level of coordination and preparedness of disaster management. Charles said it's still a mess and looks like the entire government's machinery hasn't stepped up despite the devastating floods last December. He also said it's mind-boggling that the discussions appear to have left out Selangor and instead focused on the eastern states of the peninsula and East Malaysia. He added that the Meteorological Department has identified 62 areas in Klang alone as flood hotspots due to the combination of the northeast monsoon and high tides. Citing the instance where residents of Sri Muda, Selangor were unprepared for the floods in December as they were unfamiliar with the early warning siren system, Charles mooted for the government to conduct a test run. He also called for a flood drill to ensure that the residents know the procedures for emergency evacuation. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, found troll farms linked to PDRM. However, the police chief has once again denied the allegation. Inspector General of Police Akril Sani Abdullah Sani has once again denied the police involvement in troll farms. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, the nation's top cop, however, said investigations are ongoing. Kami menafikan sekeras-kerasnya dakwaan tersebut dan uh, saya telah mengarahkan uh, pihak uh, JJK untuk meneliti perkara tersebut dan uh, sehingga kini kita masih lagi menjalankan siasatan terhadap perkara tersebut. Jadi jika ada apa-apa perkembangan, nanti pihak uh, Jabatan uh, uh, Komersial akan memberikan maklum balapan tersebut. This comes after Meta reported that it had removed more than 600 troll farms from Facebook and Instagram accounts linked to the local police. Meta said its investigation found the troll farm, which supported the ruling coalition and police while accusing its critics and the opposition of corruption, was linked to the police. MIC chief has asked Anwar Ibrahim to look in the mirror before calling for an audit on three MIC-linked establishments. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim has been told to audit Pakatan Harapan's special manifesto for Indians made during the 14th general election. MIC President S.A. Vikneswaran said Anwar should do this first before talking about conducting forensic audits on three Indian-related establishments. Speaking to Malaysia Kini, Vikneswaran said BN handed Harapan action plans, but they did not execute any of them during their 22-month rule. 
He was responding to Anwar's recent statement that should Harapan return to power in the next general election, it would conduct forensic audits on investment company Mica Holdings Perhat, MIC's educational arm Maju Institute of Educational Development, and the Malaysian Indian Transformation Unit. Anwar said this is because the Indian community in Malaysia deserves to know the truth behind the allegations of misappropriation and misuse of these entities. He said this at a gathering with the Indian community organized by PKR in Shah Alam Saturday. And now, here's a branded segment brought to you by CIMB Islamic. The 18th edition of the Malaysia International Halal Showcase, MIHAS 2022, has recently taken place at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Centre, MITEC, for four days. CIMB Islamic was the platinum sponsor for MIHAS 2022, which is also one of the world's largest halal exhibitions. CMB Islamic has been involved in MIHAS for the last 10 years and I think the uh, last event we had here was uh, 2019 and 2020 was also virtually. So this event 2022 is significant because coming out of recovery, this is one of the biggest events that we have involved in and we will continue to support this industry together with uh, Matrade and uh, the participants of this event. CIMB Islamic has gone beyond banking when they started offering one-stop solutions for SMEs to tap into the global halal market. So as you can see in uh, our, our program suit, we are facilitating SME in terms of getting them the accreditation. Uh, we have a lot of partners who are supporting us in enabling the SMEs to become uh, sustainable as well as uh, halal compliant to, to ensure that they are able to tap onto the global market. Because the halal business is beyond uh, race and uh, country and it's a big global business today. So enabling our SMEs to be a part of that takes more than just financing. So we have prepared the entire ecosystem of what the businesses need, what the SMEs need in order for them to be successful in tap tapping into this halal uh, business market. As the world leader in Islamic finance, CIMB Islamic's latest proposition is to assist halal businesses to expand beyond Malaysia. Today there's ample opportunity here for them in our booth. As you can see a lot of our SME team is here to advise them on the steps they can take. But a lot of information is available on our website and from all the events that we organize throughout the year, this is also one of the agenda and they, they can reach out to us anytime through our branches, our sales team, our website. We will make it possible for them to talk to us and guide them to, uh, to take on from there. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. Don't forget to use our special promo code kinitv916. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.